Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard 8th edition unit review video. Today we will, we will be doing a super heavy showdown. That is right, I'm going to try and do every single super heavy, all 8 of them, that are unique to the Imperial Guard in one video, and try and do a side by side comparison of each one. Now, I've already tried doing this video once and it went on for ages and ages, like 45 minutes. Um, and it was, it, I got, a, I had an omen because it just failed to save my, my uh, narration. And so I took that as a hint that this video needs to be a lot shorter. So I'm going to try and not repeat myself and just keep things nice and short and sweet and concise. Now, the first thing I want to say is disclaimer. I haven't actually yet used a super heavy in eighth edition the game. has officially only been out less than a week. So I haven't really had a chance to, to use it, but I have played uh, five games of 8th edition and I can say that I can apply my general knowledge that I've learned in those five games to what I'm seeing with these Super Heavies. Okay, so without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So the classic one is the first one. We have the Bane Blade. Now, all of these Super Heavies have exactly the same profile. They have different, essentially... There's, the difference comes down in the main gun. That's pretty much it at this point. So they all have the following profile. When at four wounds, they move 10 inches, they have ballistic skill 4 plus, they have attacks 9, they have strength 9, toughness 8, 26 wounds, and a 3 plus save. So essentially, guys, what you can think of this is that Bane Blades are like really, 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 really well wounded Lehman Russes. They've got exactly the same save and exactly the same toughness, but they've got more than double the wounds of a Lehman Russ. So that's important to bear in mind. So it, your opponents will be able to kill one of these, or should I say, your opponents will be able to do wounds as easily to a Bane Blade as they can to a Lehman Russ, but it will just take them more than twice as long to kill the Bane Blade. Okay? So, let's take a look at the Bane Blade cannon itself then. So, it's range 72 inches, heavy 2d6, strength 9, AP minus 3, and a flat 3 damage per wound. That's really good. That is a solid, all-round, powerful uh, cannon. It's kind of like, if you think about it, it's like an Earthshaker with an extra AP and a guaranteed 3 damage. And I'm already kind of loving the Earthshaker cannons at the moment. So not much more to say about the Bane Blade cannon, guys. It's a fantastic all-rounder weapon. Um, but what we need to take into account is the cost of the uh, Bane Blade. Because, I've, like I said, I've always sort of taken a look through. And it really is the cost of these units which will make you decide which ones you're going to take. So the basic Bane Blade is 430 points standard that's without any war gear now you do get the bane blade cannon thrown in for free but you still have to pay for a demolisher cannon and a twin linked heavy bolter now so that means it's not really 430 points base it's 478 points base 40 points to hold the demolisher cannon and oh my mistake it's twin heavy bolter so that's 14 points so it's actually 484 points base for a bane blade so that's really expensive now, I don't know anyone out there that doesn't run these things with sponsons. And each one of these sponsons is now an additional uh, 40 points for the Laz Cannons, plus another 28 points for the uh, sponsons. So we're looking at like 500, roughly 550 points for a Bane Blade with, two LAS, with a classic loadout of two Laz Cannons, two sets of heavy bolters on the sides, so a heavy bolter on the front, a Demarcia Cannon, and the Bane Blade Cannon. And I, oh, I've even forgotten there's an Auto Cannon in there as well, guys. Slap another 15 points on. We're looking at about, about, what is it, 200 and, uh, sorry, 200 fucking hell. 570 points for a Bane Blade? That is really expensive. What you've got to ask yourself is, will that Bane Blade do more damage than three Lehman Russes? Because that's pretty much what you're paying. You're paying three Lehman Russes for a Bane Blade. And I think the answer probably is that the Bane Blade will do more damage. I mean, it's got 2d6, Earthshaker rounds, and Demolisher Cannon. That's like having three battle tanks. Then it's got three, then it's got six heavy bolters, and an auto cannon. So, yeah, I mean, 
how I would view the Bane Blade and how I would view all of these tanks are are you playing Imperial Guard and taking three Lehman Russes? Yes. Have you ever considered swapping out your three Lehman Russes for a Super Heavy? That's how I would start looking at Super Heavies, guys. That's how I would start looking at them. Now, uh, the last thing I want to mention, which all the all the Bane Blades, uh, all the Super Heavies have, is the Steel Behemoth rule. And the Steel, Steel Behemoth rule is absolutely amazing. Uh, it, basically, the Bane Blade can pull back and still shoot and charge in its turn. So if you charge this thing forward and start grinding away, and then something starts not going quite the way you want it in that close combat, you can just pull back and start shooting the ever-living daylights out of anyone. It's crazy. Um, and uh, you can fire weapons whilst you're in close combat, uh, but only heavy flamers can fire at the target you're in close combat with. So... What I mean by that, guys, is imagine you are stuck in combat with a big blob of, like, or something. You can fire all the heavy flamers into um, into the orcs that you're fighting whilst grinding away with your adamantium tracks, which are AP uh, minus 2, by the way, D3 damage. are actually pretty good. And then you can also fire your Bane Blade Cannon, your Auto Cannon, your Heavy Bolter, and your Demolisher Cannon at another target somewhere else. So, Animagine Tracks, Steel Behemoth, and all the goodies you can get. Bane Blades may be expensive, but they are bloody good. Now, the Bane Hammer is the next uh, tank that we're going to talk about. It's got exactly the same stats, so we're not going to cover that. The one difference is, though, is that this is one of the classic assault gun style Bane Blades, or super heavies. So, what the assault, the difference between the, as I call it, sort of the turret chassis and the assault gun chassis on the super heavies is you don't get the auto cannon or the whole demolisher cannon on the assault gun you just get the big gun and the twin heavy bolter and adam and, and adamantium tracks okay so the bane hammer has a tremor cannon now the tremor cannon is 60 inch range heavy 2d6 so that's a good number of shots strength 8 ap minus 2 a flat 3 damage and the special rule is, if a unit is hit by this weapon in their following movement phase, they must have their move characteristic, and they cannot advance. So that's pretty good. You need to hit them. Now, this thing can also carry uh, 25 guys, and 10 of them can shoot out the top. So you can supplement its firepower. It can, of course, take up to two pairs of sponsors as well, um, which is it's a standard. Now, the gun itself is pretty good. The gun itself is like essentially a souped up battle cannon. How you can see it is a souped up battle cannon or a toned down Bane Blade cannon. But the really, really interesting thing to take into account with the Bane Hammer is it's only 410 points. It's 20 points cheaper than a Bane Blade. So if you're sort of wanting to take a Bane Blade on a budget, this is the one you want to go for. Because it's, it's not just 20 points cheaper. It's actually way more than 20 points cheaper. Because you only pay. You pay your 410 points. But then you just pay your 14 points for your Twin Heavy Bolts. So your Tremor Cannon is free. Which means bog standard basic with no upgrades. This motherfucker is only 424 points. Now because of that. I think there is no excuse for you not to take some sponsors on this thing. Because the sponsors are going to ramp up by another... Uh, basically 35 points per sponsor another 70 points so this thing is going to come in at a cool 500 points so realistically it's actually about 70 points cheaper than a Bane Blade now you are missing out on a Demolisher Cannon and an Auto Cannon but when you think about it it's 70 points cheaper but you're only missing out on 55 points worth of equipment okay so guys, honestly, I'm going to move on. But the Bane Hammer, to me, comes across as sort of budget Bane Blade. And I honestly think it's it's a very viable unit. Especially considering you can pile some... Imagine taking this and piling sort of like 10 plasma guns in the back of it. You're already going to be taking those plasma guns. It's a good idea. It's a very good idea. That would really supplement its firepower. Now the next one is the Bane Sword. Now, the Bane Sword, I don't think we ever, ever saw getting used in uh, 7th edition. 
Uh, Bane Sword, I, I just don't remember it being used. I remember the Bane Blade and the Hellhammer and the Shadow Sword being used, but some of these other ones never got used. Now, again, it's got the same stats, but let's take a look at... And it's an assault gun version, guys, so you don't get that Demacia Cannon. You just get the Quake Cannon and the Twin Heavy Bolter and your Adamantium Tracks, of course. Now, the Bane Sword, it's... Quake Cannon is very interesting. It's 140 inch range, a really long ranged. Now it's heavy D6, that's only potentially six shots. So you're probably going to end up using some kind of strategic reroll to try and up the number of shots you get. But the interesting thing is, is that this thing hits like a ton of bricks. Strength 14, AP minus four, D6 wounds. And the special rule is, when rolling for this weapon's damage, treat any rolls of one or two as a three instead. So basically, this thing is a strength 14, AP minus four weapon, and it does a minimum of a th of three damage per shot. It could do, I'd see, I'd see this as D6 plus sort of like D3 damage, kind of. Does that make sense? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Basically, this thing does a lot of damage, a lot of damage. But you don't get a lot of shots, and you can't carry anyone inside. So what is the incentive to take this thing? Well, let me tell you now, it's a really, really good incentive. It is only 390 points. That is such a bargain. That is such a bargain for one of these things. I mean, that is... That is less than the price of two Lehman Rust tank commanders. Way less. Like 100 points less. Almost. Like, yeah, it's just cheap. Now, remember you've got to pay 14 points for your twin heavy bolts. So you're really looking at about, about 400. But then when you think about it, you've got the sponsors to add on as well. Now, each one of those sponsors, as we've covered, is 35 points. So it's 70 points. You're paying 500, but for the low cost of 470 points, so significantly cheap, you're getting two LAS cannons, six, twi uh, six heavy bolters, and a big boom boom gun. I think the Quake, that has real potential, real, real potential. But it is very bargain bucket. Very bargain bucket. The one thing I could say is that um, if you took this thing and put four sponsons on it, you're looking at about 540 points. That is less than a Bane Blade. But you're doing four LAS cannons, 10 heavy bolters, that's 30 heavy bolter shots. And a big boom boom cannon. So for that's pretty good. If you want to take like 500 to 550 to be the baseline for one of these super heavies, that's really powerful. And ask yourself this. Ask yourself this. Is this tank putting out more than two and a half Lehman Russes worth of damage? It's got four LAS cannons. It's got 30 heavy bolter shots. I think it is. So this thing is, if you could basically how I would view this thing is are you going to be taking a fuckload or uh, three Lehman Russes? Do you want to save yourself some points? Take a Bane Sword. Now let's move on to the next one, which is the Doom Hammer. Now the Doom Hammer has a Magma Cannon. Now, this thing is interesting. Okay, it's got a 60 inch range, it's only heavy D6 again. It's strength 10, which means it's only going to be wounding most heavy things on on threes whereas the Bane sword that we saw before against anything tough to seven and below that thing's winning on twos that thing is a mainline battle tank hunter this thing is i would say a terminator hunter if you if you regularly face someone who uses fuck loads of terminators take a doom hammer because your strength 10, which means you'll be wounding everything on twos. Your AP minus 5, which means no save unless they're taking, uh, unless they get a 5 plus invun. And then you do D6 wounds, and the enemy doesn't gain any bonus for being in cover. And when the enemy is in 30 inch range, you roll 2D6 and pick the highest 
when determining the number of damage. But the thing is, we've got to look at how much this thing costs. The Doomhammer is 420 points. Now, it does have a firing deck, so it can c carry 25 guys and 10 of them can shoot out the top. But I'm going to be absolutely honest with you here, guys. I do not think the Doomhammer is worth 420 points. If the Doomhammer had been, like, the same as the Bane Sword, or maybe, like, five, 400 points flat, I would have considered it. But at 420, I just don't think it's worth it. Sorry, guys. I don't think it's bad. I just don't see... I feel like, well, you might as well get a Bane Blade, right? You know, Bane Blade is superior to this thing in every way, pretty much. Don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Now, the next two are two of the most classic super heavies the Imperial Guard have access to. The Hellhammer and the Shadow Sword. Now, the Sh Hellhammer... Essentially, how you want to view the Hellhammer is a Bane Blade plus one. It's a Bane Blade on steroids. So the Hellhammer it has exactly the same loadout as the Hellhammer, as the Bane Blade. Except for the Hellhammer cannon is only 36 inch range, but it's got an extra strength and an extra AP, and your opponents don't get a cover save, or don't get any bonus from cover. So it pretty much should be used in exactly the same sort of way. It just, it's more powerful. That's at the end of the day, that's all it is. It is just more powerful. And for that extra power, you are paying a pretty penny. You are paying 450 points. So for that extra strength, for that extra AP, and for that ability to ignore cover, you're paying 20 points. Is it worth it? Maybe. The reason I only say maybe is because think about it, that strength 10 is not really going to come into play all that much. I mean, you're going to be shooting this thing at big, bad ass motherfuckers. You're still probably going to be winning on threes anyway. The AP minus four is nice though, but again, you're shooting this thing at big, bad ass motherfuckers. And most big badass motherfuckers have a 5 plus invun save. So, don't really see it being all that useful. And if they don't have a 5 plus invun save, they tend to have a 2 plus save. So, they're still going to save. So I think the Hellhammer is very good. I just don't know if it's actually better than a Bane Blade for most situations. I feel like in most situations you're fine saving 20 points and going with the Bane Blade. Anyway... Now the Shadow Sword is the one that everyone is getting sticky knickers over. Everyone and their mums has been raving on the internet about the Shadow Sword and how amazing it is. The Shadow Sword is good, but it's only good at one particular thing. But that one job that it does do, it is very, very good at. And that one job is bending over big, badass, motherfucker, titanic units, bending them over and butt raping them. They are absolutely disgusting disgustingly good at destroying other titanic units if you face wraith knights if you face imperial knights bring a shadow sword because you won't be facing them for long this thing is another assault cannon assault gun type unit so you don't have to pay for the uh demolish cannon and you basically pay for the volcano cannon the volcano cannon is 120 inch range it's heavy d6 so it's only d6 shots but it is strength 16. It is AP minus 5. It is damage 2d6 per wound. And you fail re-rolled wound rolls when targeting titanic units with this weapon. <coughs> Let me run you th through what this means. You're only getting d6 shots, right? But you will wound anything on the game on a 2+. plus. There is nothing tougher than strength... Uh, the toughest eight, as far as I am aware. Nothing will get an armor save against his weapon. They will have to be like an Imperial Knight, a Wraith Knight will be relying on its five plus invum. Each one of those wounds has the potential to do twelve wounds. So you're wounding on twos with a reroll with the potential of doing twelve wounds per shot. It gets even better when you look down at the special rule for the Shadow Sword and it says Shadow Sword targeters, add plus one to hit rolls you make for this model for attacking a target that is titanic. So you hit on threes versus Imperial Knights and Wraith Knights. So really, those D6 shots that you already get for Volcano Cannon, it's not the end of the world. 
hit on threes, baby. If you get three shots, that's two hits. It's going to be two wounds. More than likely, two are going to get through. You're going to get, on average, seven damage per uh, one that gets through, which means you're looking at an average of 14 damage from a Shadow Sword against a Titanic unit. That is incredible. Now, if you really want to make sure that you can take down a knight a turn, you slap on some sponsors. Because each one of those last cannons on average will be able to do three more, you know, against Titanic units, should be able to do about two more damage. So you took four last cannons. You, you could, if you, maxed, if you maxed out a Shadow Sword, you could kill a knight a turn. Maybe you need a little bit of luck on your side, but you could easily kill a knight a turn. So... Bear that in mind. One thing to say is the price of the Shadow Sword is 430 points. So it's the same price as a Bane Blade. Essentially, it is the same price as a Bane Blade, but it only does one job very, very well. Whereas a Bane, Bla Bane, Blad, Bane Blade does many jobs pretty well. Okay? Now, the last two that I want to talk about are the Storm Lord and the Storm Sword. Storm Lord is a rather a relatively famous superhero for the Imperial Guard. It got a lot of uh, a lot of face time, show time in seventh edition, and I feel like a lot of people are probably going to be using it in eighth edition as well. So the Storm Lord is again, it's an assault gun type one, guys. The all the rest of the Storm Lord and the Storm Sword are assault gun type ones. So you only pay for the heavy bolter on top. Comes with the Vul uh, Vulcan Mega Bolter. It's 20 shots, strength 6, AP minus 2, 2 damage per shot. Um, the big thing about the Storm Lord is it can carry a lot of people. Now it can carry, it's actually gone down slightly. It used to be able to carry 45 and 25 can shoot out the top. Now <coughs> it carries 40 and only 20 can shoot out the top. So, <coughs> pardon me, slightly less guys can shoot out of it. But you could pack so many guys, so many special weapons into this thing, it would be unreal. A really funny thing to actually notice is the Stormlord comes with two heavy stubbers. You have to take them. You can't, and you can take one more on top of that. Which means the Stormlord can take, you can take 30 shots from the main, 20 shots from the main gun. Plus nine from the heavy stubbers. Plus if you added four sponsors with twin heavy bolter on each one, that would give you plus the twin heavy bolter it has on it, that would give you five heavy bolters, which do six shots each. So you've got thirty shots. Plus twenty shots is fifty shots. Plus nine, fifty nine shots. Roughly sixty daka daka from the Storm Lord. It is almost enough daka. Almost. 60 shots from a single Storm Lord, all strength 5 pretty much. That is very, very tasty. I think the reason why this tank generally gets everyone's dick so hard is the fact that it can carry like a full platoon's worth of guys. Um, I think it's pretty good. I just think the price tag is okay. I mean, the Storm Lord is 490 points. That's wrong, sorry. It's 430 points. It's the same price as a Bane Blade. But I don't feel like it does anything better than a Bane Blade. You know? I just don't know. I guess the Bane Blade on average on 2d6 will get 7 shots and it will hit with 3 or 4 of them. But it will then wound with about 3. Because of its strength 9. And it's AP minus three. Whereas the Storm Lord will, sh if you shoot like a basic vehicle at it, it's still wounding that vehicle on fives. So even if you get ten hits with your big cannon, with your Daka Daka cannon, you're suddenly going to get like three wounds, exactly the same as a fucking Bane Blade. So, I don't know. It's about as good as a Bane Blade, I guess. That's why, probably why it costs the same amount of points. Anyway. I think it's a good, good vehicle. I just don't know if it's worth 430 points. Anyway, Storm Sword is the last one. Now, the Storm Sword 
is again it just comes with the storm sword siege cannon so pretty unimaginative name and a twin heavy bolter storm sword siege cannon is 36 range heavy d6 strength 10 ap minus 4 d6 roll two dice and number of attacks when firing this weapon it's got the lowest result you use attacks by this weapon do not gain any bonus to rolls for being in cover and you re-roll damage weapons of one for this weapon so wow it has a lot of it has a lot of special rules so it's like a this is this thing really is like a souped up basilisk basically it's got 2d6 pick the highest number of shots so you're pretty much guaranteed to get four to five shots you're pretty much gonna that means you're going to get two to three you're gonna get about three hits about two will go through, of which your opponent will probably not stop any because of the minus four AP. And then you get D6 damage per per one that's gone through. Rerolling one, so you'll probably get about seven damage from the main cannon. That's pretty good. So it's okay. Um, all of, the, th the big thing about it is it's cheap. It's only 390 points. It's another bargain bucket one, along with the Bane Sword. It's a bargain bucket. Uh, sort of choice. Um, it doesn't really do anything. Doesn't really do much different to the Bane Sword. To be honest. If I look at the Bane, Bane Sword. I mean Bane Hammer, don't I? Yes, I mean no, no. I mean Bane Sword. My mistake. It doesn't do much different to the Bane Sword. I mean both the Bane's both weapons have D six. The Bane Sword's got plus four strength, but they've both got AP minus four. Hmm. I think it's up to you which one you want to take. They both do about the same. The Bane Sword will wound some things on twos, but most targets will be wounding on threes, like the uh, other one. And like the Shadow, uh, what's it called? Storm Sword, my mistake. So both the Storm Sword, yeah, a little bit. They're about the same, basically. The Bane Sword has longer range and higher strength, but the Storm Sword has a lot of special rules. So you, are, you know, your number of shots is more reliable than the uh, the Bane Sword. You get two to six, but the highest. Um, the enemy doesn't get any bonus to cover, which can be nice, and you get three roll damage rolls of one. So I would say, how how would I look at this? The Bane Sword has the potential to do to wound things more easily. However, the Storm Sword is a lot more reliable. You've got a lot of re-rolls and picking the highest and stuff in that weapon. Both of them are really cheap as well. I could really see... I'm considering... Put it this way, guys. I am considering buying a Storm Sword and putting four sets of sponsors on it for a cool 550 points roughly and not taking any leaving rusts and this will be my armored thing and it will do the same job as a leaving rust because it will sit there and get shot in the face which is what a lot of these super heavies will do very well and if the enemy gets too close then i will charge into them and run them over with my steel bay moth special rule so guys, I am really, really, really considering buying a Storm Sword. So that tells you what, what I think of it. I think it's very... It would round out my Super Heavy detachment nicely. Because I've got a Bane Blade and I've got a Hellhammer. Having a Storm Sword would be very nice. Anyway, guys. Tell me what you guys think about the different Super Heavies. Have any of you guys used the Storm Sword? Is it as good as I think it is? Please let me know. What if, if any of you use Bane Blades or Hellhammers or Shadow Swords yet? Are they as powerful? Are they as, are they worth the points? I'm very interested to know if anyone's had any experience with these super heavies yet. Anyway, guys, I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.